Sometimes the smallest details make all the difference. Have you ever received a package in the mail and the way in which it was packaged brought you joy? This happens to me occasionally and I tend to keep the packaging to remind me to be better at that seemingly mundane task. Let me give you a couple examples. My buddy Kyle at Canova Workshop included this thoughtful note with his order. Chris at A Glimpse Inside includes this amazing sticker on the outside that simply made me smile. Thanks, Chris. And Cam at Blacktail Studio recently nailed the packaging of the N3 Nano Coat. It is very well done. When I get packages like this, it makes me think I need to level up my packaging and maybe bring a smile to someone's face when it arrives in the mail. A few years ago, I saw an Instagram reel where Eric Curtis created a custom box to level up his products. The box, while utilitarian, gave the item that extra special touch demonstrating the care and attention to detail that warrants the contents of the box. Around that time, I was struggling to find commercial boxes to fit my products. They were either too big, too small, or simply too expensive for something that would likely be thrown away. So like all great YouTubers do, I turned to YouTube for some instructional video. I did find a couple videos, and using those videos, I was able to figure out the best possible production process for me and my shop. So today, I'm bringing you my process, showing you how dead simple it is, and hopefully I can inspire you to level up your products with custom packaging. So the process starts by sourcing some cardboard sheets. This turned out to be quite a challenge for me for some reason. I literally spent hours looking online for reasonably priced sheets, and everything that I found was either way too expensive, more than the cost of the boxes I was trying to replace, or cost a fortune to ship. Again, ultimately more than the cost of the overpriced pre-made boxes. I did finally find a supplier that sells a variety of sheet cardboard for reasonable prices and economical shipping costs. I am not affiliated with them in any way, but I will leave a link below if you're interested. Okay, so the material costs are low, but what about the labor costs? Well, it takes about 10 minutes to cut and assemble the box. So depending on your labor rate, this could be peanuts or it could be cashews. But in the end, the cost of the labor will likely pale in comparison to the cost of the product that is inside the box. More importantly, a custom box will fit the product better, increasing the chances the item will arrive at its destination without harm or without damage. I think this is the most important reason to consider making a custom box for your shipping needs. Okay, so what materials do you need and what is the process? First and foremost, you will need sheets of cardboard that are large enough to fit your project. If you're making small items, you can get many boxes out of one sheet. If you're making a larger items, say like cutting boards, you might need more than one sheet. In this example, I will be using two sheets of 24 by 30 cardboard. You will also need tape or some other adhesive for the corners. I happen to use packing tape, but you can use regular scotch tape or some of the more fancy paper tape if you have that. Whatever you have on hand to hold the sides together will work. Now comes the hardest part of the process, figuring out the dimensions of your panels. Start by measuring the length, width, and height of your item. In this case, my item is 8.5 inches wide by 10 and a half inches long and one and a half inches tall. If there's anything else you want to include in the package, add that to the overall size as well, and then account for that in the length, width, and height of your panel. I cannot tell you the number of times I've forgotten to add additional space for our board wax and our board oil. Take a moment to validate the ultimate interior size of your box before moving on to the next step. Trust me, you will thank yourself. Now, take the length and width 
and add twice the height to each of those dimensions. That accounts for the sides of the box. To account for packing material and the curves of the saw blade, I recommend adding a quarter of an inch or a half inch to each additional dimension. For example, our height is one and a half inches and the inside length is 10 and a half inches. So the final length of the panel will be 10 and a half plus three, which is twice the height, plus one half an inch, which accounts for the packaging, and that totals 14 inches. Likewise, for the width, we have eight and a half inches, so we add three inches, which is twice the height, plus one and a half inches for our packaging, making the final width 12 inches. Now that we have a final dimension, 12 by 14, we can cut our final panels. Simply set the table saw fence to the right dimension and make the necessary cuts. You should end up with two panels representing the maximum size of your box. In our case, 12 by 14. With the panels cut, now we need to make the relief cuts for the side walls. Reduce the height of your table saw blade to lightly score the panel. Set your fence at the height of your panel, in our case, one and a half inches, and begin making your cuts. Be sure to push down on the panels all the way so that your relief cut is consistent throughout that cut. After the first cut, rotate the panel 90 degrees and repeat. Repeat that process so that all four sides have a relief cut. And then repeat that process again for the second panel, scoring all four sides. Note, sometimes cardboard has different color for the different faces. Make sure you make the relief cuts on the side that you want for the inside rather than the outside. That way you will have the correct color either on the inside or the outside. Now with the relief cuts made, it's time to remove the corners. You could use a utility knife for this or you can use the table saw. If you choose the utility knife route, Simply cut the corners off one by one by cutting through that score line all the way through the other side. If you choose the table saw, then take your two panels and place the outside faces together so that the relief cuts are on the top and bottom of the panels. Then raise your blade to cut all the way through the panels and then slowly move your material through until the blade reaches that cross relief. Then back the panel out, rotate the panel, and repeat. Do this all four corners. Then flip your panels over so that the other side is showing and repeat the process four more times. By putting the inside faces on the top and bottom, you can use your score marks as guides for where to stop. At this point, if you were to assemble the box as is, the top and bottom would be exactly the same size making it very difficult to place the top over the bottom. To compensate for this, we will make one more score cut on the top panel to provide a little relief. Lower the blade to that scoring level, move your fence to the height of your box plus one eighth of an inch. In this case, ours is one and a half inches tall, so we will set our blade to one and a half plus one eighth or one and five eighths. Make the additional relief cuts on one of the panels, but not both of them. This additional relief cut makes the joint about the thickness of the cardboard, making it easy to assemble the top around the bottom without any issues. With the top and bottom ready, take the bottom panel and tape each of the corners together. Once the bottom is together, place the top over the bottom and start taping the top together using the bottom as a guide. This allows the top to fit perfectly around the bottom. With all four corners taped, your box is ready for its contents and ready to be sent to your customer. Quickly comparing the costs of a pre-made shipping box to our custom box. A pre-made box of about the same size of 12 by 14 costs about $1.38 in quantities of 25 and our handmade box costs about 77 cents in material costs, which is about 57% less per box. Yes, there is some labor, 
but that very well might be offset by the shipping costs and other factors like not being able to find the right size box and requiring additional packing materials. I think this process is super easy, super simple, and adds a nice touch to your final product. In about 10 minutes, you can create a custom box that levels up your product and demonstrates a little extra care and attention to your customers. Now you can certainly add additional customizations like a logo, stickers, or even logo tape to seal everything up nicely. If you wanna see how I make bubble stickers, check this video out right here. Thank you for watching, thank you for getting this far, and don't forget to be inspired. Bye -bye. Thank <laughs> you.